Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up this router table to make grooves. To nerd out a bit, it's important to know that there are really three different types of slots that you can make into wood. First of all, you want to pay attention to the way the lines of the wood are going. If the slot goes with the lines of the wood, they're called grooves. If the slot goes against the lines of the wood, so the lines of the wood are going this way and the slot's going against it, it's called a dado. And if a slot is on an edge like this or also on an end like this, it's called a rabbit. In this video, we're going to talk about making grooves on the router table. Now, regardless of whether you're making grooves, dados or rabbits on the router table, it's really important that you unplug the router table before you do any adjustments. It's also important to make sure that you've properly unplugged it by trying to turn the router table on. The fact that it's not turning on means I'm good to make my adjustment. After you've unplugged the router, you're going to clamp one end of the fence using one of these clamps. Take your clamp, Rotate it so it's upside down. Grab the silver ratchet and you can move it up and down. Have the clamp upside down like this. Slide the silver ratchet down. Grab the red handle and spin it clockwise or to the right to tighten it. If you did this right, you would only have one clamp on one side and no clamp on the other side. We're gonna clamp this side later. Now, regardless of what type of slot you're doing, your next step is to make sure that you have put the correct router bit into the router. I've created a separate video on how to change router bits, and I've included a link in the description below. But for the purposes of this video, you're looking for a straight bit where the profile is a rectangle, and the top kind of looks like this. So this is good for slotting. This one can be used for slotting. And this one could be used for slotting. And of course, the one in here could also be used for slotting. This one here clearly doesn't have a rectangular profile, so probably not for slotting. On top of making sure that your router bit has the right profile, it also needs to be the correct size. And the size of the router bit depends on the type of slot that you're trying to make. In this example over here, I want to make a groove that's three quarter inch wide. So this router bit needs to be three quarters of an inch. To figure out the size of the router bit, you're going to look at it and you're going to measure the distance from this point here to this point here. So you grab your ruler and you measure that distance. So the distance from here to here is three quarters of an inch. So this is the correct router bit. Now the next step is to determine how much of this router bit should be sticking up from the table. To figure that number out, that's, go that's going to be dependent on how deep the slot is supposed to be. In this case, I want my groove to be a quarter inch deep. That means that this router bit must be sticking up from the table by a quarter of an inch. To adjust the height of this router bit, you're going to need a crank that looks like this, and it goes into this hole right over here. If you spin it clockwise, the router bit goes up, and if you spin it counterclockwise, the router bit goes down. Since we need our slot to be a quarter inch deep, you wanna look at the router from the side, and you wanna keep your eye on this point here. You're also going to need a ruler. At this current moment in time, this router bit is going to cut a slot that's 5 eighths deep. That's way too deep. We need a quarter of an inch. So the, this tip here needs to be right down at a quarter of an inch. So now it's at a half inch. And now it's at a quarter inch. Now my router bit is set to cut a slot that's a quarter inch deep. Once we've got the height figured out, the next step is we're going to determine how far back or how far forward this fence should be. 
The distance of how far the fence should be is dependent on where you want to put your slot. In this example here, if I wanted to make this groove, I would need to make sure that this edge of the slot is three quarters of an inch away from this edge over here. So the distance between the router bit and the fence should be three quarters of an inch. Again, we're looking from the bird's eye view. Here's the fence, here's the router bit. To get the most accurate slot, you wanna make sure that this tooth here is facing the fence. Right now, that tooth is facing this way. So I'm just gonna rotate it. And now that tooth is facing the fence. Right now it's 3 sixteenths. We want three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna shove the fence back. This will cut a slot that's half inch from the edge, but I want three quarters. There we go. The tip of this router bit, which is facing the fence, is exactly three quarters of an inch away from the fence over here. Our router bit's all set up. Once the router bit is the correct distance away from the fence, we're just gonna get rid of our ruler, and it's time to grab our clamp and clamp this section. So you grab your clamp, pull the silver ratchet back. You're gonna hold it like this, so it's upside down. Pull the silver ratchet back down, and you're gonna spin the red handle clockwise like this to tighten it. It's also a really good idea just to double check the measurement again here because sometimes the fence shifts back and forth. At this point, you're ready to go ahead and cut your groove. It's worthwhile just to point out that if you're cutting grooves like this, and again, grooves are slots that go with the lines of the wood, all you would need to use are your orange push pads. It's important to remember that when you're cutting a dado, and in case you forgot, a dado is a slot that cuts across the lines or the grain of the wood. It's important to remember that any time you cut against the grains or the lines of the wood, you wanna have a backing board directly behind it to support your cutting. If you try to run this on the router without your backing board, you're likely to experience tear out. Tear out looks like this, and it occurs when chunks of wood are ripped from the edges. All that information, I wish you all the best when you cut your grooves.